Technology Symposium 2021, sponsored by the Alabama Department of Rehabilitation Services, the Alabama School for the Blind Alumni and Workers Association, and the Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind. CEU Open Code 90054. Our presentation will begin shortly. CEU Open Code 90054. Our presentation will begin shortly. CEU Open Code 90054. Hello, I just wanted to quickly introduce our next presenters from Vispero for their overview of blindness and low vision technologies. We have Mike Wood. Michael Wood has been working in the assistive technology field for 15 years. He focuses on supporting students and educators in blindness and low vision areas by providing software and hardware to help individuals succeed with independence. We also have Ron Miller. Ron Miller has a bachelor's degree in counseling slash psychology from Christian Heritage College. Ron Miller has been involved in blindness access technology for field for four, 20 years. He has worked at Freedom Scientific, now Vispero, since 2000 in various roles, including blindness hardware product manager, and also currently as a blindness technology product specialist. Ron is passionate about the use of access technology as keys to success in attaining one's goals and pursuing one's interest and the importance of braille literacy for both youth and adults. Please enjoy. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, today, you're listening in to Vespero, an overview of blindness and low vision products. You have myself, Michael Wood, Strategic Accounts Manager for Education. I've been working in the assistive technology field for about 15 years now. I uh, graduated with bachelor's in business and marketing and found myself in the assistive technology arena. Currently, my position with Vespero has me focusing on supporting students and educators in the blindness and low vision areas, and I provide software and hardware to help individuals succeed with their independence. And with me today, I have the fabulous Ron Miller. Ron. Hey, everybody. It's great to be here along with Mike. And again, my name is Ron Miller. I am the blindness technology product specialist, and I've filled a number of different roles at uh, Freedom Vespero. I've been with the company for It'll be 21 years in May, and uh, I've done a number of things, including hardware blindness hardware product manager, and now the uh, blindness technology product specialist. And my current role here is to be a resource about our blindness product information, and ostensibly to our state, our sales staff, our technical support folks, our customer service folks, but also to all of you. I have the opportunity to do trainings and presentations like this. Uh, when we are out and about and COVID isn't an issue, we, we come to people's locations. We do everything from in-service trainings for VI teachers and other folks to uh, product presentations. So a lot of different things in a lot of different places. And I've been lucky enough to do some of those with you, Ron, and they're always mm -hmm. fun. And they're great. Yeah, it gets excited with the hands-on, you know, being able to, you know, play around with the products and you're awesome at doing them. So I'm glad that what we were- I miss most in Zoom, no hands-on, you know. I know, that's the uh, unfortunate <laughs> part. Yeah. So today we're gonna cover a couple different things. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of background on Vespiro in general. Um, we're gonna start out with low tech, uh, moving all the way up to super high tech. So we've got optical magnifiers, portable video magnifiers, foldable portable video magnifiers, software products, blindness hardware, and then uh, the Q&A, we're going to skip, of course, because this is pre-recorded. So I apologize for that. If you do have questions after this, feel free to reach out to Ron or myself um, or call Vespiro directly. So who is Vespiro? Um, so Vespiro is kind of a group of companies that merge together 
uh, including Enhanced Vision, Freedom Scientific, Optelec, and TPGI. And our team, goodness gracious, sorry about that there. Um, <laughs> Our team has an extensive knowledge and years of experience in the field of assistive technology. Uh, we are in 70 different countries, 25 different languages. We've got a world-class distribution channel. So one of the things you know that's great is we've got dealers scattered throughout the entire country. And so if we're not in that area, that territory, we've got somebody there to represent our products and help you with training and so on. Uh, we've got a full suite of hardware and software products, as you'll see today. And then the TPGI team is enterprise and compliance solutions. So they're gonna make sure that your websites are accessible and um, easily readable using some of our technology. So to start out with here, we've got optical magnifiers and daily living aids. So these are things that oftentimes I find individuals forget, you know, or you start to see like, I need some magnification. So of course you'll get your glasses. And then once your glasses, you kind of phase out and you need maybe readers or stronger magnification to see things. Um, so you've got illuminated handheld stand and optical magnifiers. You've also got non-illuminated handheld optical magnifiers. Uh, some of the spectacles, which there's some images here on the slide of, absorptive lenses. So you may be familiar with maybe the blue blockers, right? So something that's gonna block out that blue um, color spectrum. And I actually have a pair of these that I got as a demo and I, I don't wanna ever send them back because they're fantastic for driving. Um, I love them. And when I have family or friends visit, get in the car and you know I put them on, they're like, what are you wearing? And I, I tell them, here, try them out. And then they're like, these really work, they're great. <laughs> um, and then low vision lighting. So we often forget that lighting is super important, uh, especially those of us sitting in front of computers all day long you know, a lot of the lighting that we provide have different colored or um, temperatures, so different spectrums of light, and then also different levels. So you can increase or decrease the uh, intensity of that lighting, and that's really helpful. So the transition from those optical magnifiers, which I also always call kind of like the Sherlock Holmes magnifier, right? Uh, you know, then kind of transitions you to these portable video magnifiers. And these are a nice transition because when you're working with optical, you only have a set magnification level. So if you were to buy an 8X magnifier, that's what you're locked in at. Uh, you know, if you buy a 10X, you're locked in at 10X. So everything that you magnify is gonna be eight or 10X, for example. But when you get to something like these portable video magnifiers, you have a range of magnification. You also have the ability to customize the colorations and contrasts on these. You also can add guidelines for reading. Um, and some of them even add in some really cool functionality or features such as scanning and reading. So optical character recognition, which I'll talk more about here shortly. So our most popular handheld is the Ruby XL HD. And Ron, you've been with Freedom Scientific for how long now? Oh, 21 years in May. So you, you were around when the Ruby probably first came out, uh, its first rendition, I bet, oh, right? Oh, the original Ruby, and it, it caught on really, really well. People loved it. And still to this day, you know, we've mm -hmm. got a couple different um, models in the Ruby line, and the one that is the most popular is this XLHD. Right. It's crystal clear, high-definition magnification. You get no blurring as you're moving it across the text that you're reading. You can magnify up to 14 times. So earlier I mentioned, you know, the different magnification levels. This goes from two to 14 X. It's super easy to learn how to use. You've got color coded buttons on this. So the yellow for, you know, your plus and your minus to zoom in and out. The blue are gonna allow you to change your contrast modes. So say you wanna read in high contrast, white text on a black background or yellow text on a black background. You can easily switch in between those. It's a five inch. LCD screen. It does have a built-in handle. Uh, that handle has two different positions. So you can use it to kind of move it along the page of text that you're reading, or you can flip it out all the way and have it more like your optical magnifier. So if you were reading something on the wall, on the wall excuse me, uh, at the grocery store, you're reading maybe packages or pricing on, uh, you know, the um, shelving. Again, no blur as you're reading. Lightweight, this weighs only 10 and a half ounces. So super portable, this fits into your shirt pocket. 
It also comes with a handy dandy little case that you can strap onto your belt loop or you know comes with a handle on it as well for a shoulder strap. Three hours continuous use battery. So this has a lithium battery built into it that's rechargeable that will give you three hours of continuous use. I mentioned earlier guidelines for reading and masking. I find these super helpful, especially when you're working with students that need help with tracking um, or visual clutter issues. So if you wanna cut out some of that text on the screen, you can minimize it by cutting out the top and the bottom and making them focus directly on one line of text. The color contrast that I mentioned, you have 20 different color contrast modes that you can choose from, so super customizable. You can save images in this product, uh, which are helpful to maybe do a slideshow at a later date or you know, go back and maybe use it to review, uh, gosh, anything if you want to save contact information in there. Remember how Charlie Matson he saves the serial numbers off the backs of his uh, like his uh, his his Wi-Fi router, all those places that are hard to 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 get around and look at something that's on the back of equipment on a shelf. He puts his magnifier back there and <laughs> gets an image of those serial numbers. Remember that? See, Ron, that's a great, yeah, and that's another great <laughs> use point, you know, it that you don't great. think of, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. first off, those things are so small anyway, mm -hmm. and then they're in the most obscure, odd position. And you spot know, pulling all them. the stuff off the shelf to read one serial number label. And Charlie, who's low vision, just takes and holds the uh, the ruby back there, captures the image, and he never deletes it off the ruby. That's smart. That's super smart. So yeah, mm -hmm. so there's another use case for that. Um and if you want to download those to a computer, you can do so from the Ruby using the included USB cable that comes with it. So then if you want to kind of take it up a notch now, so you've got the Ruby with the five inch screen. We're going to talk a little bit today about a newer product, the Compact 10 HD. HD stands for high definition. So that was the same on the Ruby XL HD, high definition, meaning the camera is a high definition, high quality, good graphic images, you know, things like that. So the Compact 10 gives you basically the functionality of a desktop unit, but in a 10 inch portable handheld unit. So this unit's no bigger than most of your common uh, tablet type products on the market, whether it be iOS or Android. It does have a fold out arm that when you fold that out, you can view photos, you can fill out forms, you can view labels on packages that wouldn't easily fit underneath the unit when you're in the reading or using the built-in reading stand. And this also does include speech functionality. So it comes in two models, one with speech and one without. If you do the unit with speech, you actually have the OCR capability, so optical character recognition. It will scan the text in, runs the OCR engines, and then reads it out loud to you using the voice of your choice, male or female. You can also scan in and read different languages. So if you have some text in Spanish, German, Italian, French, you can scan that in and choose that voice and it will read it to you with that correct voice. Again, this is a 10 inch touchscreen. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just over two pounds. So again, lightweight, portable. This weighs 2.02 pounds or 0.92 kilograms. You've got three built-in cameras, one for reading, which that is gonna be when you have it in its reading stand on top of the material. One for writing, that is that fold out arm that I mentioned. So you can easily write, fill out documents, write checks, whatnot underneath that. And then one for distance. So you can take this to a fast food restaurant. And if you needed to read the menu, you can hold this up and zoom in and read the menu from the distance from the other side of the counter. You can set it up as a desktop unit or the tablet mode. Your magnification on this is a little bit higher than the Ruby. So the Ruby went from two to 14 X. This goes from 0.5 X to 22 X. And that's because you've got a larger screen so you can fit more on there. The nice thing is you can use this similar to your other tablet devices. You can pinch and zoom to zoom in or out. It also is a touchscreen unit. So on the screen itself, you'll have a plus or a minus button to zoom in or zoom out. You can change your contrasts in this, the same as you could in that Ruby. You can also save images to this. Again, you can take a snapshot and have it read it back to you. It is battery operated, so you plug it in to charge it, but you've got an eight hour continuous use battery. 
So that's going to last you a long time. That's continuous use. Don't forget. So if you're using it for a little bit, you power it down, turn it back on a little later in the day, you, that's not the continuous use. So you've got a long battery life with this unit. So this image here is of that compact tent sitting on top of a magazine. So it's great for reading mail, newspaper, magazines, viewing photos. I know a lot of these, uh, you know, I've worked with the school age kids, but also with some veterans and seniors. And these are great for when you get photos of your grandkids sent to you. Uh, you know, you can use this and enlarge it and get a great view of the, uh, the grandkids or family. In your full page mode, so now I have an image of the compact tent on the screen with that arm folded out. And you'll notice on the right hand side of it, there's actually a form with someone has a pen where they're signing this document. So this is great for filling out forms, writing checks, viewing things like medicine bottles or boxes of food. Um, what if you wanted to do some fun stuff like crossword puzzles, word searches, again, viewing photos, or doing that optical character recognition and scanning in something. So really a lot of functionality, all built into a small unit. So this gives you, again, that desktop functionality, whereas years back, you would have to have this big, clunky, heavy unit sitting on your desktop to get all of this functionality. Now it's in a 10-inch model, folded up, put it in this nice carrying case that it comes with, and you're ready to go. It's such a huge change over time, isn't it? Oh my gosh, Ron, you remember. I mean, I've been into some homes sometimes where, you know, we're swapping out, they've, they've upgraded to a newer mm -hmm. unit, and I, I take their old unit away, and it's just like, oh my goodness. Um, they have all this space on the table all of a sudden. Yes, yes. And the Compact 10 with the OCR mode, so the image now on the screen shows you those buttons that I talked about earlier. So the plus, the minus, uh, you're changing your contrast. So you can have it highlight the words as it reads it. You can change the color selection. So if you want it to read and you know, have that, those high contrast colors again, it does have a tactile marker. Um, so when you are putting material underneath there, it's easy to line it up. So you know that you're, you're getting it in that area that it's gonna scan. And um, again, viewing and signing documents. So now, you know, so that again, you've got a 10 inch screen. Well, what if you need something larger, right? So from there, you kind of can move up to, and this also the same thing as Ron and I were just saying, you know, the old desktop units, you know, were stationary. Uh, I've worked in schools where they've had to have a cart where they'd have to cart that thing class to class because the, the student couldn't carry it. So now we're moving up to foldable portable magnifiers. And the image I have up on the screen right now on the, the top is the Clearview Go 17 inch unit, how you would view it if you were looking directly at that product. Below it is kind of a cool image of how you can change the height of the monitor um, from being high to medium to low. You know, you've got all that flexibility in between. And then showing you that when you fold it up, it's really no larger than some of the old laptops we had for those of you out there that you know, maybe in the 90s or early 2000s or whatnot, some of the older, heavier, you know, laptops, right, thicker. And then the last image there on the right-hand side is of a young lady carrying it in the handy carrying case that it comes with. So it comes with a carrying case with a handle and a zipper pouch on the front. This gives you a 17-inch monitor. It comes in two versions, a 15-inch or 17-inch. So on this next slide that I just showed here, you've got the Clearview Go 15-inch. And this is a 15.6 inch screen. You've got a full high definition 1080p um, camera. So the image quality in this is spectacular. Uh, Ron, you've probably been out when I showed this or one of our colleagues have shown this. And I know you can hear the people sometimes. They when love that video. They yeah. do. <laughs> it's, I mean, the, the distance quality on it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can do document, you can do distance and you can do self viewing. And, you know, the self viewing we often forget sometimes because we're so, you know, thinking more so along the lines of uh, schoolwork and whatnot. But it's also important to teach students and individuals that, you know, this is great. You can view yourself if you want to apply your makeup, you want to shave, um, putting in your contact lenses. So you can use this like a mirror, but think of a mirror that you can actually magnify and look at yourself much larger. Mm -hmm. um, this has a continuous five-hour battery life. So again, continuous use 
five hours. You've got some different functionality for zooming in and panning along a document, so it helps with reading. I like the fact that it can be customized with three different selectable magnification ranges. So if you're working with an individual and maybe they need to start out at a higher magnification, so their vision may be a little bit worse, so they need three and a half X to 60 X magnification, or maybe their vision's just starting to decline and they only need two X to 32 X or 1.4 X to 20 X. You can customize and choose that functionality or that magnification level. Doesn't it make it easier for people sometimes if their if their acuity changes during the day too? Some conditions make that happen. Absolutely, yeah. So that's the nice thing is you can easily go into the menu and just choose, hey, I want it to now start out at three and a half X. Um, so it gives you that full functionality and customizability and to do so really easily. And then the same with those contrasts too, Ron. You know, I know personally um, when I'm looking at the computer all day long, you're looking at white backgrounds, oftentimes when you're looking at emails and whatnot, and just cutting down on that glare, it's nice to sometimes change it to a different color contrast. So you might mm -hmm. want to do a darker background um, instead of that bright white background. And this right. gives you that functionality too. You've got 35 color modes built into this. Um, it weighs only 10 pounds. So, you know, compared to the old units that you needed a cart to roll around, you know, this is a 10 pound product um, for the 15 inch and the 17 inch is just about 12 pounds. So not much more, not much heavier. Again, it comes with the carrying case. And if you wanna connect this to a TV screen, you can do so with an HDMI cable. There's an output on this. So I always, uh, you know, tell my customers and clients that purchase this, you know, hey, if you wanna pretend you're going to the drive-in movie theater, you know, you've got a large screen, you know, many people now have these giant TVs, right? Um, so you can push this image out to your 65, 70 inch television. And, it's the and ultimate you, big image, right? Oh my gosh, that would be, that's yeah, huge. <laughs> so next slide here, we've got a image of the, um, the menu buttons, or excuse me, you know, the control unit on this product. Super simple, easy to use. Uh, there's only seven buttons on the front of this product. So we really made it simple and easy. Uh, so you've got your power on and off. You've got your brightness control. So you can rotate that to increase or decrease the brightness on the screen. You can also press it to turn on or off your autofocus. And that's important when you're filling out documents underneath it. Anytime you're writing, you want to you know, turn off that autofocus because you don't want it to keep on trying to focus on your pen or your hand. You want it to focus on that uh, page of you know, paper or the form that you're filling out. You don't appreciate that unless you're using a product that doesn't have it. And every time you wiggle your pen or move your hands, all of a sudden it zooms you know, onto that instead of what you're trying to see. Yeah, and it's, and it's frustrating because it you know, kind of throws it all off because then you're, you really want to be focusing on that, that material that you're looking at or filling out. And yeah, it just uh, it complicates matters. You then have a freeze frame button. When you freeze frame, you can actually further zoom into that and using the number seven button on there, the joystick button, you can actually scroll around that frozen image, um, which is really nice. The largest button in the middle, number four, is your magnification. So you're going to basically be able to rotate that to the right or the left, turn it just like a dial on your stove and or your you know, old school TV knobs, turn that right or left, and that's gonna increase or decrease your magnification. If you press and hold that, it actually gives you your menu functionality. And then that brings you into the menu where like Ron had mentioned earlier, where you can customize that as far as uh, your magnification levels, changing your color contrast options if you wanna add more functions in there or more color options, which then five actually allows you to toggle between your presets. Six allows you to toggle between your preset color modes Number six will bring you right to your natural color. And then if you press and hold number six uh, button, and that's, I'm just numbering them from left to right. So from left to right, number six is you're gonna pump, bounce you to your natural color or press and hold and it gives you your find function, which your find function is really nice because say we're at zoom level you know, 15 on a document, but you wanna find a specific area on that page you actually can press and hold that number uh, six button 
it's going to zoom out and give you kind of a, a block image on the screen so you can then move it to where you want to be on that page or move your page around to where you want to zoom into. And then when you let go of that, it brings you right to your preset, the last magnification level you were at. And when it pulls that image back, Mike, so you're seeing the whole page instead of a little magnified piece, is there a, an indicator, a crosshair of some sort that says this is what you're going to be looking at when it zooms back in? There is, Ron. Yeah, there's a little yeah. box there that lets you know that, which is is nice because it gives you that visual cue. Mm -hmm. This um, is where you're looking. And then you release yep. that button and it zooms right back up to the magnification you want, but in the exact spot you want to view. Which, you know, you don't think about sometimes, you know, it's nice if you're looking at, oftentimes for schools, uh, you know, school age children, you're looking at maybe a textbook where you have an image, right? But you always usually underneath the image, there's going to be some text telling you what that image is. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were reading down below, but now you want to look at that image, you can hit find, zoom out, and go quickly right back to that, you know, up to that image, and then it zooms you right back into your preset. And then seven is that joystick we talked about. Seven also allows you, if you press it, to select lines and masking. That's really nice, again, for tracking. You can get horizontal or vertical lines and masking, so you can cut out some of that visual clutter from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. So that's going to finish up um, all of our low vision devices that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the software, which this is going to segue us into, you know, the blindness tech that Ron's going to talk about. So your software, uh, we've got three great products for software. We have JAWS, Zoom Text, and Fusion. So I'll start out with Zoom Text. So Zoom Text is going to be a magnification software. Zoom text allows you to increase the magnification of what you're looking at on your computer. Uh, these are all Windows-based softwares. So you can install them. We've got, um, it's all digital now. So we email you a link, you download the software, install it. It's really easy to do. Uh, and then you can customize all of this. So in Zoom text, you can customize the coloration, the, the size of the, of the mouse. You can add crosshairs like Ron was talking about on the magnifier. You can do so on your laptop screen, um, or if you're connected to a larger monitor, you can have that on there as well. And it does add in some speech, so it can read certain text back to you. If you want to get more speech functionality from Zoom text, your step up from there would be to Fusion. And Fusion is actually kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's actually a fusion or a merger of Zoom text and JAWS working together. So why is that important? I like to say Fusion's a great transition product for somebody that's vision is going to be progressively getting worse. Um, so from Zoom text, you know, anytime you're magnifying something, you're losing a lot of what you're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have to magnify something eight times, you're only seeing like what, 1 64th of the screen. Of the yeah, monitor. which is tiny. It's one square on a checkerboard. You yeah, know, if you want to make that analogy, if the whole screen's the checkerboard, you're only seeing one square. So everything else is pushed out of, you know, out of the way which that's, you know, you don't think about that, that you're really not seeing much at all, right? Mm -hmm. If you view it, if you're thinking about it that way. So at that point, you know, you can then add in fusion functionality, uh, which takes stuff from JAWS, which then you're able to get Braille. You can use your Braille displays with fusion. You get more speech functionality. Uh, it's going to read a lot more to you. Um, but they work together. And they do. And it's yeah. just, you know, and I, I think, Ron, you can speak to this. You know, I find that once you start using those keyboard shortcuts, you can be so much faster than someone using a mouse. That really seems to be the case. In fact, I used to be a travel agent in a former life, and they made all of their employees use the keyboard instead of the mouse because they could uh, they could book travel faster and make more uh, make more profit for the company. But yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because JAWS, of course, everybody thinks of JAWS as the screen reader for speech and Braille output, which it is. And Zoom text is magnification. Fusion brings them together. And it lets a user take the best aspects of both and use it to their advantage. And so as uh, somebody's visual acuity drops, instead of trying to maneuver that mouse around and you're, you're peering at the magnification, you've got less and less on screen, as we said. So you're, you're trying to find the things you want to click on. Instead, you, uh, the person would use the JAWS commands and drive their computer, select things, launch things, but still be able to take advantage of the magnification to read the text that they want, uh, to see the things that they want. And then perhaps as the day goes on, there's some fatigue that takes place because you're looking at 
a lot of magnified stuff. Yeah. Perhaps they could use the speech for reading things and just sit back and let let it talk for a while. So they these things interleave and they they give you two feature sets melded together. As you said, a fusion of those two things so you could take advantage of both. And if somebody really is going to have uh, increase uh, decreasing visual acuity, it's a great way to transition into JAWS eventually. You already know all the commands because they're the same. The other place, and Mike, I know you work with school kids and teens all the time. Yeah. It's a great way to transition somebody who's reluctant to start using a screen reader. They don't want to do that. They want to keep using magnification. So a VI teacher, a counselor can say, well, keep using Fusion, use your magnification. But what they're doing without thinking about it is learning the JAWS functionality so that the transition when it must come is much, much easier. And there's acceptance for that without knowing it. Exactly, which is uh, many times the case in the schools. And that's that's the way we promote it. I mean, it's just a nice bridging gap, you know, between Zoom text and JAWS, it really is. And, you know, and then once you start adding in that Braille functionality with it, that's so powerful. And, you know, you start adding in the picture smart and some of these great functions that, mm -hmm. you know, just open up a world of opportunities for for these students and these people using these products. Oh yeah, let you capture the, the paper documents and bring them into an e-format, an electronic format, and it all becomes very accessible visually, audibly, and eventually if they must move into Braille. Now, I'm a big Braille turner, Braille advocate. I know it's, you know, it's, it's important. And if they must go that far, then it's, it's tactile as well. So it's a great multimodal approach to this. And, you know, we're flexible with the licensing. You know, we've got home, we have new annual licenses, we have professional uh, licenses, you know, for corporations and businesses. Uh, one thing I definitely want to mention is for the higher ed market, it's really spectacular because schools that uh, are higher ed universities and colleges that have active licenses that are current, we actually provide licenses to all of their students, faculty, and staff at no cost um, under, you know, you can go to our website and under the software tab, there's something in there that you can go to that will allow you to then look up and see if your school provides that to you. Um, and it's, it's spectacular. I mean, so many schools are taking advantage of that and it's under the sponsorship uh, or sponsored licenses. And that's really powerful. So with that, I'm going to next slide. Uh, Ron, we're mm -hmm. gonna talk about the Focus Blue Braille display is the fifth that's generation, right. which... Um, so we transition from the visual to the tactile, right? Yes. How's yes. that for a segue? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some images of the focus braille displays up there. And the, the, the current version, the current version of the focus braille displays, uh, the focus 14, 40, and 80, were actually released in 2017. So they've been around for a while. They've been very, very successful because of what they are and how they do what they do. And uh, what we have is three versions, three flavors, one family, right? They are still, after four years on the market, just about three and something, um, they're still the most rugged Braille displays on the market. And Mike has been with me. I can't get other people to do it, but I, I will demonstrate these to VI teachers because we want teachers to realize these are rugged. Um, they, When we sat down, I sat down with the engineering team at the time and we all started to spec out this new product you know they said what's our goal and i said we got reports of ruggedness issues and things coming back that need repairs because kiddos don't care that this was an expensive product you take it you drop it into a backpack which is sitting on a cement floor <laughs> or that kind of thing so i said my goal is to say what would a 12 year old ron miller do to this thing because i was not real kind to my stuff I i'm much better now really but uh back in the day and i said it's got to survive what a 12 year old uh, you know, middle school student might do. So we've got our new units. The housing is made of steel and aluminum. We've got bumpers at each end. You can see on the images there on the left and right side. They almost look like handles, but they're not. They're actually bumpers, which if you drop this thing on its end, they, they compress and they absorb that impact. And that impact energy goes into the flexible material of the bumpers. We redesigned the braille cells so they would take that lateral shock and Somebody's running through a hall. Yes, the blind kiddos run through the halls. Okay, if you're a VI teacher, you know this. If you're 
somebody else, you might not think it happens, but I did it, all of us did it. And uh, if you're not paying attention and not using your cane right, sometimes as you swing around the corner, your braille display swings out on that strap on your shoulder and it's gonna hit the wall. Not that we ever admit it, right? <laughs> so we designed our braille cells so they would be physically and electrically isolated to make them more shock resistant. Um, you can see, and it's, it's sort of geek speak, it's drop tested to mill standard 810G. So what that means is there's a, uh, the military tests their equipment to this standard. Uh, there's, it has to survive a drop. Uh, don't quote me on this, please, but I believe it's 30 inches to a hard surface. Now, please don't do this 100 times with your focus braille display. <laughs> we don't anticipate it being dropped repetitively. But Mike, you may remember this. Uh, I carried that same focus. I had to finally give it away to somebody else. It didn't die. I had to pass it on. Somebody needed one in a hurry or something. But I, I carried one unit from June of 2017 till, what was it, the spring of 2020. And wow. uh, I always dropped them on the desk, you know, to show how rugged they were. And that thing just kept on going, um, you know. And so I've done we, the same. Yeah, I've done that. I mean, when I show this at schools, I, I show them, you know, just to because it's got a little bounce on those bumpers mm -hmm. and, you know, in the metal housing too, Ron, I know when we reconstructed this, it just feels solid in your hands, yeah. you know, it's just a solid device. And um, the other thing I love with it is the USB-C charging port too, because- Absolutely. It, yeah. We used to have, the, we used to get those back. Now, USB-C port, it sounds like a lot of letters going by, USB-C. It means that you can, you can put that connector in and it's, it's sort of a, 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 a rounded rectangle shape. So it's obviously not going to go in turn sideways. They won't fit. But there's no upside down orientation. If, if you can put the plug into the slot, it's going to go in and fit. Yeah. Whereas on the old USB mini connector, it had those two little metal points, which uh, we'd get units back because 12-year-old me said, if it doesn't go in easy, I'll push it in hard. And that's really bad. <laughs> for the hardware, okay? It does not like to be forced. No. So yeah, that USB-C says, if it fits into the slot, it's going to be the correct orientation. It doesn't care. And that's really, we even designed the circuit board that that connector sits on to be flexible. We use what's called flex, literally called flexible circuit board material. So that um, if they come in at a little bit of funny angle, little up, little down, that will flex, accept the connection. And then when you release it, it'll return to that horizontal position. It's very, very forgiving. So we do like that. It is a big deal. Ruggedness was a big deal to us. Uh, it does function if you're using it with uh, an iPhone and, or iOS device in general, a Mac PC, Mac PC, sorry, mixing and matching, mm -hmm. a Mac computer, um, Android devices, everything from a Chromebook to all of your Android tablets and smartphones and everything. And then of course, to a regular PC using JAWS and Windows, it will connect to all those devices and all of them, every one of those screen readers and screen readers from the, for those platforms provide a, a key mapping. Everyone's a little different because the screen reader dictates how it works, but all of them allow for both input and output control of your computer, control of your Mac, of your iPhone or iPad, so that you not only get braille output, but you can use the keyboard and other controls to actually drive the device. On my phone, uh, I can leave my phone in my pocket. I can have my focus braille display connected to my computer, just like it is right now. You can't see that, but it is, and I'm reading my notes as we're talking. And if my phone indicates that a message comes in, I can switch to the active connection with my phone, read that text message, maybe even reply using the braille keyboard. There's no speech. My phone is still in my pocket. In this instance, it's sitting on my desk next to my uh, computer. There's no indication to you that I've done that. Um, that would be cheating, right, if I did it. But I do it. I don't tell anybody. But I have that flexibility to work with a number of different device types. And because connectivity includes one USB connection, in this case to my computer, and five, up to five active Bluetooth connections, I can switch between devices on the fly and be able to take advantage of that connectivity. So. We've got a lot going in this package, connectivity, ruggedness, right? Great controls. And we also have a function or a feature called Scratchpad. And Scratchpad is, I jokingly call it your, your, your pencil and paper to go, which is a pretty dumb joke, but it's what I call it. And what it means is that we have a real basic 
note editor. If you need to take notes, need to jot down a phone number. If you're sitting in class, a church, in a meeting, you've got a way to take notes. And, and the notes can be up to 32, uh, 32 kilobytes in size, which if you're just doing Braille input, that's hundreds of pages of notes. So, um, you know, I've got stuff that I, I let go every time uh, we go out and do presentations. There's one particular note that I reopen and I add a date because it has a built-in clock and a built-in calendar in this Braille display as well. So I paste my date and time and I make any comments that I need to bring back with me. So Scratchpad lets me do that. It lets me compose in my own Braille notes in its own format. It'll let me open up, compose or edit a text file, not just plain old .txt text file. But for those of you who are, are really into this, you need to know that in a text file, you have to use computer Braille. Okay, don't worry about what it is. If that's if I'm suddenly speaking another language, don't worry about it. But uh, just so you know, text files have to be done in computer Braille. The other thing that you can do with Scratchpad is you can you can download onto your Focus Braille display uh, formatted Braille files, Braille books from Bookshare.org, from NLS Bard, CNIB in Canada, uh, RNIB in in uh, the UK uses uh, the the formatted Braille. Uh, and others may as well. So you, you can't edit these files, but if I want to carry a book, right now I've got a, uh, a cookbook, Recipes from Malaysia, on my Braille display that I go through when I've got a moment just to look at stuff. So, you know, you've got a, uh, some, some very, very basic but flexible tools available to you on the Focus Braille display. Okay. And then we turn the corner. And we've talked about JAWS. Uh, Mike's talked about JAWS. Yep. And we would mentioned that you've got speech and Braille output and with a Braille display, Braille input. But we now come around the corner and we bring the Focus Braille display together with JAWS into a notebook device called the L Braille or a note taking device. And note takers have been around for a long time, um, all the way back to Blazy Engineering and the, uh, the Braille light. Uh, and then moving forward, our product line, the Millennium and the PacMate, um, other manufacturers have offered their accessible note takers. And they all feature a suite of applications that let you do text editing and browsing the web. And there's usually a calendar and a clock and some other things. Um, and they all differ a little bit from product line to product line. But all these note takers offer this in a form factor, which is very portable, features long battery life, and then speech and Braille output and Braille input. So the Braille, uh, the L Braille brings all of that to the table as well, but it is a note taker that's different from the rest. It really does differ. One way, of course, is as you can see on the images, if you can see them, and I'll describe it if you can't, it shows that the Focus 40 Blue Braille display that we've been talking about actually docks into a, a, a space for it, a well mm -hmm. at the front of the unit. It sits down in there and it is locked very securely in place. And so the input output part of the L Braille is actually the Focus 40 Braille display. They work together to perform a, a single unit. And the other differentiating piece is that the, instead of having a proprietary Vispero suite of applications, you know, Vispero writer, Vispero calculator, Vispero whatever, uh, the, the L Braille uses Windows 10. So it's mainstream, it's running Windows 10 and it's using JAWS as the screen reader. So all of a sudden, we're right back into the mainstream with this. And that's a huge, huge benefit in a, in a lot of ways. First of all, because if you've got somebody who is learning the Windows environment anyways, whether it's a student or a professional, L Braille puts you right back into the environment that you know. It's, it's JAWS with Windows. For students who are coming up and they begin perhaps with the L Braille in grade school as their first device, making simple documents and writing stuff and doing stuff and then moving on into junior high and high school with ever increasingly complex tasks, they stay in the Windows environment so they can use the Braille keyboard and then plug in a, a regular QWERTY keyboard and learn their keyboarding skills with products such as Typeability or Talking Typing Tutor. So Braille literacy, I can't say it, Braille literacy is maintained you use your Braille keyboard and read your Braille display in class to take notes with speech turned off, please. I will tell you right now, as a, as a blind person and a Braille user, it is so important to keep your ears out in the real world so you can pay attention to what's being said, what's going on in a class or in a meeting, but still be able to take your notes, read your notes, do all of your editing on the fly without something in your ear trying to take your attention. But 
again, you can add a keyboard, a QWERTY keyboard, work on keyboarding skills. Uh, sighted colleagues and peers and everything can send the video from an L Braille to a monitor or a smart TV. And you add a keyboard and a mouse and all of a sudden, it's like any other Windows computer, which is great for parents. All of a sudden, they have no difficulty assisting a student with, with homework assignments. Maybe you're doing a class collaboration on a PowerPoint presentation, or you're all working on a Word document. Well, that can all come home in its native format. If you want to use PowerPoint, Word, Excel as you move up through the grades, all of those kind of things, it's running Windows 10. It's standard Windows. So, for example, I use all of those things all the time. And often I do these Zoom meetings right from the L Braille. I push my PowerPoint presentation uh, like Mike is doing now. And it's all done with the L Braille. It's all done with Microsoft Office, okay? Um, in my case, we use Office 365, Outlook email, the whole the gamut of features is done right from the L Braille because it's mainstream. That makes it easy to identify with for non-Braille users, for parents, for teachers, for the IT people that have to come in and maybe assist in getting a note taker onto a school network, a college network. It's, it's nothing foreign, it's nothing alien. They can look at the monitor, use a keyboard and mouse just like they would with any other computer. And uh, they're able to do that sort of stuff. It's, uh, it's very approachable. It includes your, your standard kind of list of suspects, if you will, for connectivity. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. There is a cellular modem for those who wish to take advantage of that uh, for, for data and that kind of thing. USB connectivity. There are two USB ports, two USB type A ports, and a USB C port. There's a, an SD card slot, and that will take SD cards up to two terabytes in size. That's huge. Uh -huh. And it has a microphone, stereo speakers, and an external microphone jack. So, you know, it's, it's very well-rounded. Um, because it's Windows 10, it's, it's JAWS, it's full-featured. The other thing that I see as a big advantage, and Mike, I, I think you'll concur, for mm -hmm. students working their way through school, you know, we're beginning to hear, I have for the past few years heard of students who are using a note taker, using proprietary apps. They get to the end of their, their school career, finishing 12th grade, they're going to transition into college or into work. And they suddenly realize they have, and, and you know, when you're a kid, you know everything. So they've insisted on just using a, a note taker with those proprietary apps. They get to the end of their school career, maybe into college or, or work, and they don't know Windows. Mm -hmm. And Windows is still the major operating system in the professional world, in the college, you go into computer labs and everything, you hit, you hit Windows. The L Braille keeps that continuity of platform throughout your school career, throughout a student's school career. So you are working in Windows, you're working with JAWS, you're learning these things, you're staying mainstream. And when you complete the process and transition into education or work, you don't have that disconnect. You already know how to do these things. The last video we uh, slide we have is a video of how the L Braille connects, how you put the focus down into that well to receive it. You slide the locking lever in place, and they're locked very firmly together. It's it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to show that one now, Ron, because it has a little audio to it, so I don't want to cut you out. So oh, thanks. Go for it. Down. There we go. And they just fit together. It's beautiful. And, you know, I have to say, you made a great point with that. I mean, I, I know when we were traveling a lot, mm -hmm. people were always super impressed when I would plug this unit in to a monitor and I would actually use it to show my slides at conferences, mm -hmm. um, you know, and demo it because it's, it's hard to kind of visualize without seeing that sometimes with that L Braille uh, because it is, I mean, it's just that focused 40 Braille display, right. you know, snapped into place like that. And you know, great point with parents and teachers and stuff. You know, we all know Windows-based operating systems. We've mm -hmm. all used, you know, laptops in the past and computers, so we're familiar with it. And for a blind student to go home and a parent look at a note taker, and I mean, I just think of that sometimes. They're like, how do you, where do you begin, right? Where yeah, do you begin yeah. learning that? It can be so, so intimidating. It is. And so this, with this, this takes that away. <laughs> plug that, you know, QWERTY keyboard in, plug in a mouse and yeah, you can control it. So it's really right. nice. Um, right. Yeah. So with that, that you know, we've wrap got this up, doesn't it? 
It does wrap us up. And I, <laughs> last slide, Ron, I forgot. I didn't add your email here. So if you want to say your email address. Um, I would be happy to. So if you have questions, since we, we don't get to do a question and answer with all of you and we're not there in person, uh, you had Mike's email up on the screen and mine is almost identical to his, except for the first part. It's R Miller. So R like Ron, and then Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, at Vispero, V like Victor, I-S-P-E-R-O.com. R. Miller at Vispero.com. And mine is M. Wood at Vispero.com. So M-W-O-O-D at V-I-S-P-E-R-O.com. And feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any mm -hmm. questions at all. And Ron, as always, this is fun doing these with you. And Oh. Always good getting together with you. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time to sit and watch this with us and letting us present to you like this. Agreed. So thank you and take care. Bye-bye. Visit our website at altechsymposium.net. Our next session will begin shortly. CEU close code 36778. CEU close code 36778. CEU close code 36778. Visit our website at altechsymposium.net. Our next session will begin shortly.